to you we lift our voice and say you are the Lord of oh, you reign you ancient Zion's King Kadosh 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 you are just worship it from your heart you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Ah, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. You are. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Ah, you ancient. I Can you pray in other tongues for some moment and steer yourself to receive the word tonight? The entrance of the word is light and understand it unto the simple. Steer your heart to receive the word of God tonight. Our hearts are ready. 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 Oh, Katele Bibiki Abakadis. We see me more far, more low. The truth of your word, like never before revealed. See, more power, more love. The truth of your word, like never before revealed. And equip community church, we see more power, more love. The truth of your word, like never before revealed. Like never before revealed. Like never before revealed. Like before revealed. Glory to God. Our faith is here tonight. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sea, your name, your name is to be Adonai. Sing it. From the rising of the sun, from the rising of the sun, to the setting oh, of the sea, your name, your name 
Father, thank you. Let your word come with transforming power. As many hearts heart that are ready tonight, let them have an encounter. Let us keep conforming to the image of your son and strengthen going from faith to faith, from victory to victory, and from glory to glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let your amen have faith. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Your amen, your amen is not amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. All right. Greet two people and just welcome them. God bless you. Go on streams, please. Greet two people and just welcome them. All right. Smile at them and let them know that God is good to us in this place. Amen. All right. Let's welcome our online brethren. Um, the network is quite bad, so we are on MixLR and we'll upload the video later. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Let's make progress. Hebrews chapter 11. I continue my teaching on partnering with God. Partnering with God. Let it go down. Let it go very low, very low. Partnering with God. Are we together? Uh, if you are ready and excited that you want to hear the word, can you shout hallelujah? Yeah. All right, let's make progress. Hebrews chapter 11. Let me see if you are following. What verse did we stop last week? Hebrews chapter 11. What verse did we stop last week? All right. Hebrews chapter 11, we stopped at verse 7 last week. So we have been able to look at certain dimensions of the faith experience. Can you go a little lower? Certain dimensions of the faith experience. How that faith has many dimensions. There is not just one way when it comes to faith in Jesus Christ. There are various manifestations of the same faith. Just like you know, that diamond has actually many dimensions of light. There are certain atmospheres that you will put a diamond and through certain operations, all right, that scientists understand better, you are going to see various lights gushing forth, emitting, all right, from a diamond. The faith of our Lord Jesus Christ and faith in him also manifests various dimensions. And that's why last week we were able to look at the testimony of faith, right? Tell me, just be telling me and let me be saying it here. Uh-huh. What did we look at? Faith testimony. Look into your notes. Tell me what we have. Thank you. Let me keep it. Huh? Hello. If you are in some service on Sunday, tell me. Faith testimony. Uh -huh. Let's go. Faith comprehension. Uh, don't say it after, bro. Toby. Everybody should say it together. Number one, faith testimony. Number two, faith comprehension number three faith what faith offering number four faith work and translation number five the necessity of faith number six faith warning and response let's go to hebrews chapter 11 and then we are going to enter verse 8 tonight hebrews 11 verse 8 let's read together now i want to go by faith Abraham, Hebrews 11, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing where he went. Now, that's what we will call faith obedience. All right? That is faith obedience. But we will not stop there because verse 8 does not give us the total picture of Abraham's faith journey. Are we together? Hello, are we together tonight? I want to teach you tonight. You have to be ready. Are we together? All right. So verse 8 tells us that by faith, Abraham received the call of God and instruction from God. And the Bible says he obeyed. Now that means that that dimension of faith that we see Father Abraham walking is what we call what? Faith obedience. Thank you, my brother. Faith obedience. Write that down. That's the next dimension of faith. Obedience. It is impossible to have saving faith without obedient faith. The faith that saves is the faith that obeys. The faith that makes righteous is the faith that obeys. Some of you are, need, are going to need to make sure that you are catching up with notes. You see, the church is not an entertainment ground. 
The church is not an amen center. The church is a place where you are trained to understand the word of God and to prepare you to do the work of the ministry in life, all right, and even to edify others. So there is a lot of ground to cover and I need you to be following. All right, so the obedience of faith. Now, when you read verse number nine, it becomes a bit clearer. Look at Hebrews 11 and verse nine. By faith, let's read together. By faith, let's go. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Is it not beautiful that there were heirs with him, meaning that he had company? Is that true? I've told you, you see, people say misery has company, but faith too has company. Are we together? Daniel in Babylon had his friends. Is that true? Paul and Silas in the prison, they were a team. Elijah and Elisha were a team. You cannot engage the faith journey alone. Why? The design of God is that we should not neglect to gather the gathering of one another as we see the day approaching. Is that true? But that's not even my main point tonight. Because that's to charge. If you have issues with consistency with church, you have to learn that church attendance is actually one of the systems of preserving your life and destiny for days to come. No man on the face of the earth knows the battle that is about to befall him next week. Is that true? Do you know what you are going to go through tomorrow? But when we gather together, we gather to be strengthened. We gather to be energized. We gather to be equipped. We gather to be prepared. And we gather to also sharpen one another. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron, and a brother, the countenance of his friend. Are we together? Here he sojourned with those who are the, the same heirs of the promise. And that's part of the instruction of scripture. Because if we say faith as obedience, what we are saying is that faith applies the promise of God. Is that true? It means that faith keeps to the terms of the covenant that God makes. Tehillah, for example, if God has given you a word concerning a matter, one of the things you should look out for as a man of faith that wants to obey God is what are the terms and conditions. The Christianity that only shows you the promises of God and does not tell you about the conditions is going to lead to your frustration later. Why? God always operates by protocols. And if all we know is his promises, we will not be able to see the performance because promise is not what fulfills itself. Principles is what makes promise to be fulfilled. Are you together tonight? Say with me, promises don't fulfill themselves. Principles are the foundations for the fulfillment of promise. I need you to say that again like students. One, two, go. Say promises. Louder promises don't fulfill themselves. It is by principles that promises are fulfilled. Do you understand that? Do you get it? Hello, come on. Do you get it? Yes, sir. Obedience of faith. So there are Christians who are eager to enter 2024 and now we are here and people are celebrating. Oh, look at what God is going to do this year. It's a year of enlargement, expansion, increase, fruitfulness, multiplication, um, and elevation. And, and we have, do you know that you will hardly see a church that will tell you this is a year of war? It's always a year of victory, but forget. Whether you like it or not, you don't have victory without wars. But that which gives you victory in the midst of life's wars is fair. He says, this is the victory. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Listen, you must, let me teach you another thing. When we gather like this, you must force yourself to respond to the word. It's discipline, no? it's training. It's part of the signs of spiritual health. Your response to the word of God can affect you. Are you together? So when I say, when I do something and I say something and it makes sense from the word, respond. Are you here? It's not drama, it's real. Are we together? Okay, are we together? Yes. Let me test you. Say, the word of God pumps life into my spirit. The word of God is the diet of champions. You see, only 10 people are talking. Say, by the word, I see my life change. The words were framed by the word of God. My life uh -huh, is framed 
by the word of God. You see, 11 people are cutting. You say, my life, my destiny, my marriage, my health, my business, my career, my ministry is framed. Hey, somebody say framed. Designed by the word of God. Therefore, I'm not a slave to my situations. I am above. For the Bible says, he that is above, is above all things. Say with me, I am from above. I have been made to sit together. Hey, hey, you see, you see, some, some are still okay. Maybe they are sitting, they are showing another dimension of the revelation. Say, I have been made to sit together with Christ in the heavenly places, uh, not in my local government, in the heavenly places, far above principalities, powers, might, thrones, dominions, every name that is named in this world. Come on, in this world and in the world to come. No weapon formed against me. Prosperous. Say no weapon. Move around and say no weapon. Give me volume now. No weapon formed against me. Prosperous. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God forever. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh yes. Uh -huh, sit down now. Uh -huh. You are in service now. Sit down now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh now you are in service now all right look at hebrews 11. make sure you're watching the camera so that's good hebrews 11 amen because this thing the way it's doing me tonight are you ready for the word now look at verse 9 but by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in the state country let me let me talk about faith tenacity faith what's up tenacity when you look at the word sojourn it means to stay Notice, he did not stay because he did not have transport fare. <laughs> you know how we say, no be transport fare, carry me, come here, na grace. <laughs> Some of you, no be transport fare, carry you, come, na grace. Some of us, na transport, God show mercy, amen. I'm saying that you need to understand that there is what we call the tenacity of faith. The tenacity of faith, my brother, is such that even when the circumstance is contrary, because God says to stay, if the place is getting hotter, you must stay. Are you here? If God says, Larry, you would have to wait another three years for this. The reason why I will wait is not because I don't have money to do otherwise. It's because once as he spoken, twice have I heard that power belongs to God. Hmm. Are you here? Because, you see, anytime God speaks a word, his integrity is committed to making sure that what he has said has come to pass. I'm saying that even if God does not remember in quote, that word by itself will make sure that it comes to pass. Are you following me? Yes, sir. By faith, we must learn to sojourn, to stay with the will of God. Something is happening to my mind. I think by faith, the, the, the batteries need to come back. All right? Let me try. If, if it keeps going low, you'd have to change it or do something about it. Now look at it. Hebrews 11. He sojourned in the land of promise. Some of you need to understand that when Paul and Silas, for example, are we together? When Paul and Silas were cast into prison, at midnight, something happened. What, what happened? They were singing praises. They were worshipping God. Now, a man that heard about them last week, casting out devils and healing the sick, when he comes this week and hears that they are in prison, to him, that's not faith. That is failure. I'm saying that without revelation, you can mistake faith for failure. Without understanding, you can think that you are in a backward motion, whereas God is doing a deep work in you. A lot of Christians want to quickly get out of their situations, want to quickly run away from the problem, forgetting that even in problem, there is purpose. Remember, I taught you when we started last week. He says, work, all things work together. Is that true? Meaning that even if it looks like a delay, it's working something. Because when Hannah was looking for a child, God said, listen, the reason you are waiting and you are not like Penina, it's because what I'm giving you is not a baby, it's a prophet. 
And I hope you know, how many of you know the children of Penina? Do you know their names? Why don't you know their names? I don't know why, but you know why. You, because their lives were not as significant as is that true. But there is one Samuel in Israel. We don't know many Samuels in Israel, is that true? Sometimes you need to understand that you come to that mature level of faith where God does not exist to please you. God exists, all right, for his own glory and has allowed you and I to exist to please him. Meaning that our lives must bring him pleasure. Even when it looks as if something is hurting us, like Job, we must say, though he slay me, I will praise him. God is not your enemy. He may tarry. Ah, the writer of the, the prophet said, do it may tarry. Have a call. He said, wait for it. He may look quiet. That vision, that assignment, that instruction, whatever God has said, although it looks futuristic, you must understand that God has gone ahead. He didn't need transport fare to get there. So it is by his wisdom that we bring you there. So while you are waiting, find out purpose, even in pain. Are you here? Look at it. Look at verse 10. For he looked for a city which has foundations, which builder, all right, whose builder and maker is God. So I, I, I taught you last week that when God tells you to move, he has been in that location before it ever appeared on Google Map. Today, there are some places you get to, and Google will be like, Can you help us update this place as, right? And then you can, there's a way you can actually say, ah, this is this location, you know. But God has been there. For example, Elijah at the brook of Cherith. Meaning God knows Cherith. Mm. God was there to instruct the ravens. Such that by the time Elijah will come, the provision was waiting. Hey, are you here? God knows, okay, Cherith has dried. Let's go to Zarephath. As long as Elijah will obey God, he will see the glory of God. Faith that does not have obedience is the reason why Christianity looks like a scam today. We believe God with mouth, but we are not obeying him. And Jesus says, there is a lot of people who honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Are you still here? Alright, go to Hebrews 11. Let's enter verse 12. Something good is about to happen. <laughs> All right, read verse 12. Hebrews 11, verse 12. Hebrews 11, verse 12. One, are you there? All right, are you there now? Very good. One, two, ready, go. Therefore, no, no, we're, we're in verse 11. Is that true? Don't read verse 12 without verse 11. In verse 10, what do you see? The eternal perspective of faith. How that he was looking for something that was beyond the present. Looking to that which is beyond the immediate Look into that which had eternal value. That's why your Christianity cannot be limited to time. Paul said, if we have hope only in this world, then we are of all men most miserable. Meaning that Paul knew, the apostles knew, even Jesus knew that there is a life beyond the present. And so faith has eternal perspective even to temporal situations. Why will I not fornicate? It's not just so that I will not have STI. There is a heaven I will gain. And there is worldliness that must be lost. Are you here? Eternal perspective. Faith sees beyond the immediate. It sees beyond what is going on around. They said to Paul, we will kill you. He said, absent in the body. Present with the Lord. He can see beyond now. Can you see beyond now? Can you see beyond where you are today? Can you see God's plan? And know that my beginning may be small, but God has a purpose. And know that when we breathe our last on earth, we will breathe our first in eternity. And it will not be about how many things we have gathered on earth. Because there is a Christianity today that only talks about faith in order to get things, but does not talk about faith that can also give things for the sake of God. I hope you know that one of the proofs that you have faith is that you are repenting. So repent means to change your mind in a way that leads you to change your behavior. That means that if there were some things I used to do before, the elders will say, things I used to do, I do them no more. Meaning that if our faith does not cost us anything that used to be a trail to us, maybe that faith is fake. Sometimes God is going to make demands. 
Abraham was rich before he met God. Do you agree? Abraham was rich before he became a man of God. But when God said, step out. Move out of your comfort zone to the place that will show you obey. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 11. This one is powerful. Verse 11. We read together. Glory to God. Read together. Now, one to go. Through faith. All wait now. You need to. You see, I'm teaching you how to. That's why. I will lay the foundation. I'm teaching you how to also read the Bible. Once you rush a verse of scripture, you will miss the juice in the text. How many of you went back the, during the week and said, ah, that Hebrews 11, me, what do you do? People ah, really, ah? Oh, our studies in Revelation say, you mean it, those letters to the door. Ah. Mm -hmm. Don't rush it, all right? Our goal in this ministry is not to jump through verses and just say something. It's to stay with it until we get the juice. Amen. Because if you can get the juice, it will work for you. Now read together carefully, one to go. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Look up. Is that not deep? <laughs> that is deep. He said through faith. Sarah received strength to conceive. Do you know what that means? Even conception takes strength. Hello. You are not... Ah, yeah. Do you know how old Sarah was before she gave, got pregnant of Isaac? Abraham was already 100. Sarah moved past menopause. But the Bible says through faith. She received, in fact, I read that word in the Greek. And it means, when it says receive strength to conceive, it means lambano dunamis. What it means is she cuts the capacity to bring forth by supernatural power what God wanted for her. Meaning old age is not a limitation to childbearing. Faith is what you need. I taught you when, you were, when we were using our living room for service. I taught you that it is possible to be pregnant even without a womb. And it has happened in real life not once, not twice. Why? God can choose to use anything. Mm. Are you here? Is it the God that made a virgin conceive that cannot make you? Are you following me? That asks us about, are you doing research? Are you following what I'm talking about? Okay, the Lord did you understand. It's for married people. Amen. Do you know what research is? Okay, research. Amen. The Lord, I said the Lord give you understanding. So what do we call that? Faith, here is faith reproductive capacity. Faith reproductive capacity. I want this to steer faith in your heart. By the grace of God, those of you that know us know that even us, we are a testimony to this. Is that true? Oh yes. Oh yes. Reproductive capacity. Guess what? Even if it looks as if your, your dream has died or you are way past it, if it is through faith, something can come again. When it comes to the realm of faith, there is no impossibility with faith. Say to your neighbor, there is no impossibility with faith. Mark 10, 27, Jesus said, listen, with men, it is impossible. And I'm saying to somebody tonight, with men, with your family members, with your friends, with your boss, with your colleagues, uh, it may be impossible. But not with God. For with God. In partnership with God. All things. Someone say all things. Come on, shout it. Say all things. Ah, you are not. Say all things. All possible. All. All means all. Is that true? Faith, reproductive capacity. Lambano dynamics. Miraculous power and ability in abundance. The Bible says she deemed God able and trustworthy and that's why like sarah the lesson we learn here in partnership with god is that you must learn to trust god regardless of your emotions and regardless of what your body is saying because i imagine every month after she has passed menopause you know if they were selling always th those days i know there was no always there must have been the greek name but there was no always 
Do you know she will not buy always again? In fact, they will not give her for better gift. Why? She has he done buy it. In fact, do you know as at that time, if they were selling more fix or all these baby diapers, kiss kiss, or there are different names they call them, you know. I'm learning their names now, I've forgotten the there was one. Do you know that if they were sharing it in the party, Sarah will not collect? Why? I'm not expecting anything. But there is a God that when he promises, you better start expecting. Because most times, if you are not careful, eh, 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 you may be three months inside before you know that uh, something has happened. Because what God does most times starts from within before he manifests on the outside. So for example, if you come for this service, I assure you, there must be something that God has already put on your inside. And what we need to do is to help you water it so that it can find expression. So that in a few months from now, you will come back to testify and say, I did not know that God was already doing that thing. Somebody say, Amen. May that be your testimony. I say, may that be your testimony. Yeah. Go to verse 13. Verse 13. Let's read together now. No, where are we? Verse 12. Why am I in one verse ahead today? Jesus. Therefore, uh -huh, sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sun which is by the seashore innumerable wow that's very powerful so that already tells you that the multiplication power of faith is such that from one can come many let me give you an example i want you to lift your hand if this is true has god ever done any miracle in your life before that you know that a this one is only God that did it. Raise up your hand. You all raise up your hand. Let me see those. It's not everybody, but those ones. Uh -huh. Okay, those will be good. Even you are. Talk. Let me tell you something. And you must understand it by revelation. If God does one, he has done every other thing. The same faith needed for one is the same faith needed for one million. Do you I'm, I hope you know I'm not even talking money. Do you understand what I'm saying? The same thing. That you could look back one day of your life and say, eh, now God. Remember that song? Now you be God. Almighty God. You know be my no. You know be my no. Narekele. Narekele. Narotuto. Oh, mema. Hallelujah. Leave the rest for the evil guys. Amen. Glory to God. Are you saying that? Look at verse 13 now. These all died in faith. Not having received. <laughs> uh -huh, we are getting deeper now. Not having received the, the promises. Let's read now. But having seen them afar off. And were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. What is that? Call it faith's consistency. Faith's consistency. Faith's persuasion. They were consistent. Even though they did not receive the promise, they were persuaded. You see, the word persuaded means they were convinced. They were convinced. They embraced and confessed. What does that mean? They acknowledged. You need to understand that there is always a corresponding action that makes your faith give tangible effect. For example, Elijah met the woman that we do that was in debt and he said to her listen madam can you borrow vessels and she and he told her borrow not a few she borrowed vessels and later the bible would say as soon as there was no more barrel or vessel the oil stopped flowing meaning the problem was never with the oil the challenge was the availability of the vessel that's why every time you come like this to hear the word of god in different areas of your life 
you are stretching your vessel, building capacity for more. Because the limitation can never be with God. It must be with our own minds. Are you understanding this? Let me also say this one. Many times, I need to pay attention to this to bless you. Our definition of faith is not complete. It's like one side of a coin. One side of a coin is not enough to transact. It has to be the two sides. Well, the, the, the aspect of faith that many of us like and believe and know is the faith that always receives and succeeds and is always happy. That's very nice. But there are days when even faith may not receive the promises. And God is still pleased with you. Are you here? Are you here? Now that's deep. Do you know that faith actually means trust? Peace. Do you know that faith means trust? That's what it means. That means that I would actually trust God's answer even if it contradicts what I want him to do. At the time I want him to do it, it is still faith. Mm. Are you here? Meaning faith can trust God to say no if no is the answer that is best for me at that time. Don't serve a God that cannot say no. No, God can say no. And he says no. But many Christians never hear no from God. God is always saying yes to them. It's not true. Read your Bible. Paul cried to God and said, the messenger of Satan is buffeting me because of the abundance of revelation. Can you take it away? And he said, no. This one, huh? it's a cross. You are a man of faith and power. In Acts 19, 11, he says, and catches and aprons were taken out of the apostles and they were working miracles, healing signs and wonders. But this same man of God is saying, a messenger of Satan is troubling me. And he went to God, besought God three times. And you know what God said? My grace is sufficient for you. Does that mean your faith should be that one that, that, that just goes back and says whatever will be, will be? No. We are saying there is a point to get to your work with God where certain things will not change although you have faith. It is God's pleasure that you go through it. If you do not go through the valley of the shadow of death, how will you know that is with you? Inside church premises. Uh, who does not know that God is with him in church premises? When the keyboard is playing powerfully and everybody's worshiping, Sister Taylor is singing praise, Sister Faber is backing up, everybody's dancing. You say, Oh, God is with me. Of course. You have a cry, God, you are so with me. But when you get out on the street and you fell down from a bike and something is almost breaking your leg, do you know at that time you don't even remember any God? The God. You, you first cause that. But there is a consciousness where as you journey into the deeper waters of faith, you find out that even God's know is still good for you. You want to force a relationship to work that God has left. You want to force... Mm, are you here? You want to force yourself to stay in a place and God has moved. You know the, the most dangerous place to be is where God was. You want to kill yourself. When God has said no, it's time to let this thing go. You say no, I put a lot of money in this thing. So you keep putting more money and keep experiencing more pain. Sometimes God's answer may not be no, it may be rest. You say no, God, I must be frantic. If I don't worry about this thing, it's a sign of irresponsibility. God says no. Who can by worry add a creepy to his statue? Who can by worry add a day to his life? He says, your father in heaven knows that you need these things. And that's why he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Listen, I've come to that point in my own life where I believe God. See, if something does not happen, I don't kill myself. I be if I know I believe, I believe. Hallelujah. How do I know? For example, I pray for the dead. I pray for the lame. I pray for the blind. I pray for the deaf. I pray for the deaf. The deaf hear, heard. I pray for the blind, the blind so I pray for the lame, the lame walk. We still have those videos, some of them. The lame walk, the crusades. But guess what? I prayed for the dead and the dead did not rise. I prayed the first time, the dead did not rise. I traveled to another place, I prayed for the dead, the dead did not rise. I was doing evangelism in this community, I prayed for the dead, the dead did not rise. But guess what? When I prayed to a level, I knew that, no, something is not right. I said, no, it should not take that long. You know why? I've come to a level in my faith where when I pray to a level and I know that I've released my faith, and I know that God has heard me. 
Listen, it is not every day you pray for that we rise. It is our arrogance to say we will empty all of it. Who told you that it is everybody in that city that God wants to raise? Are you learning here? Mm -mm, are you learning? <laughs> Come to be, be mature. Be mature. So these days, if there is a matter when I pray about it, and I've really taken time to pray, and I've declared God's word, and my faith is strong. Listen, I'm good. I will. The next thing to do after my prayer is to wait for God. Some of you have prayed, but you are not waiting for God. So it's more like your actions of unbelief is on doing the prayer. Are you learning? Say to yourself, I will not undo what I am doing. Say, I will not undo what ought to be done. Let's make progress. They died in faith. Ah, hey. They died in faith. The way people can die in faith, of course, they died in faith. They died believing God. Look at verse 14. This is what we call Verse 14 is what we call faith speaking. Faith speaking. You're going to practice that. You know we did that just now. Yeah, we'll do it again. Read verse 14 of Hebrews 11. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Faith what's up? Speaking. The apostle said, we likewise also Having the same spirit of faith, we speak. It's the word homology. It means to say the same thing in concept. You know what that means? God has said it. I believe it. I will say what God has said. And anybody who says what God has said is going to see what God has said. They believe and they were speaking. I hope you know in Jesus' earthly ministry, he was speaking. Do you agree? You fit tree. You are caused to your roots. There will be no more fruit in you again. Do you know that's what happened? Do you know that's what happened? Some of you don't talk to God about your situations. And you don't talk to your situations about God. You only tell your neighbors about your situations. And tell your situations <laughs> about your neighbors. You must be able to talk to God about it. And then after a while, then you declare, Who are thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain ground. And then as you declare the word of God, sometimes you, are, you know, it's easy to think you are declaring and you are laughing. That sometimes you are crying. No? Is that true? Yes. But after a while, you switch. As it happened to you before in prayer, you were praying, you were crying. Suddenly, something just came upon you. And you just began to, in fact, me, I've noticed in my work with God, and this is not a doctrine, but there are times when, when you pray to a level, the Holy Ghost can tell you, in the middle of the night, go and wear your best clothes. Wear your shoes. It has happened to me about three times. Like, hey, hey, what we did? And you would just see me find the final shoe, clean shoe, everything, and then I'll be walking around in the middle of the night, speaking in tongues and praising God. Speaking, of course, you know, you wash it later. <laughs> speaking in tongues and praising God. But every time I've obeyed God to take certain actions of faith, the results are always different. Sometimes it's not immediate, and sometimes it happens immediately. Are you learning? I'm saying, listen, your faith can work right now. And your faith can manifest later. You cannot cook two meals and they will end up coming from the pot at the same time. When you are cooking indomie and when you are cooking beans, two of them cannot be done at the same time. Are you understanding? So don't, don't always think that if I don't get it now, now, God is not working. No, God is always working behind the scenes. You are the one that is not seeing it. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Verse 15, let's go. We're making progress. This is very important. Read verse 15. One, two, ready, go. And true. No, only 10 people are reading. Hebrews 11, 15. Let's go. One, two, go. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had the opportunity to have returned. If they were, were what? Sir? Mindful. Somebody say mindful. That fake mindfulness. But they say, how are you finding this? It's inside the Bible. They were mindful. When you say faith, mindfulness, what are we saying? We are saying, calling to mind. We are saying, consecration. To obey the one who made the promise. Mindfulness. We are saying, staying conscious of the destination. So that you don't return to the place God delivered you from. 
Say with me, I, Larry. Okay, you are saying Larry. You can say I, Larry. I stay conscious of the destination that God has shown me. I will not be discouraged by where I'm coming from. In the name of Jesus. Do you believe it? Mindful of the country. But look at verse 16. Ever living, ever present, Yahweh. <laughs> ever living, ever present, Yahweh. The, the, the Lord asked me to tell somebody here tonight that that situation that has just sprung up around your life that is very specific to you and it's a dear thing to you the lord says it's a faith school it's a faith school as you practice the word of god that situation will bow to you if you are the one just say amen yes hmm. all right but now verse 16 but now they desire a better country that is an heavenly wherefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he hath prepared for them a city you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone and right now and right now in the good times and bad come on you are on your throne you are god alone listen listen that is what is called faith desire it's faith desire so they desire a better country and what is that better country heaven is that true eternity with god reigning with god was their priority not just reigning in life but reigning with god guess what in christianity we have the opportunity to have both you can reign in life all right and reign in eternity he says we who have received abundance of grace hallelujah and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by the one jesus the christ now look at the next verse which is 17 to 19 by faith abraham hmm, when he was tried, somebody say try. So what do you call that faith trial? The Bible speaks, Peter, was it Peter writing? He said that the trial of your faith, being so much precious like gold, is going to bring to you far more exceeding weight of glory. Your faith must be tried. Every valuable thing will be tested. In fact, if you go to buy anything new, not a kube you, Anything new, they will tell you, test it. They will even paste that thing. Have you seen it before? Those that have bought new things, have you seen it before? They will test it. Even if you know what you've seen it somewhere. <laughs> test it. Sometimes they will even give you warranty. Is that true? But glory to God. The warranty we have is truth. He says it is impossible for God to lie. And the scripture cannot be broken. The warranty is the Holy Ghost that goes on our inside. Because it's our seal of redemption. Are you following somebody? That is it. Faith trial. How, how is the trial? How, how, do we, how do we see that? He offered us up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. I'd like you to know that when the Bible used the word only begotten, uh, it's not a very strange word. When you read the account of Matthew's gospel, you're going to see genealogy, Right? Abraham began this, and then Nason began Abinadab, and Abinadab began uh, Nason, and Nason began Salmon, and Salmon began Obed, and Obed began Jesse, and Jesse began David, and David began. Mm -hmm. You should clap for me. Amen. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> now listen. That begat simply means to beget. And what to beget means to give birth. Do you understand? So, what it means is that, hear me now. Isaac was Abraham's only begotten son. In the order of the covenant. Because remember he had Ishmael before he had Isaac. But God said my covenant and promise is not with Ishmael. It's with Isaac. 
For in Isaac shall thy seed be named. Mm -mm. Are you here? Are you following Bible study? You see that in Genesis 22, right? In fact, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis, just so that you see. Look at Genesis 22. If you read from verse 1, the Bible says, And it came to pass after these things, that God did tempt Abraham. Now, James already made it clear that God does not tempt men to sin. The, the word tempt here simply means to test, to prove the authenticity of. Listen, ladies, if you are here, say amen. amen. Is it true? I want to ask, oh, it's a question, oh, I don't know, I'm not a lady. But I want to ask, is it true that if a man claims to love you, there are ways you can test him? Is it true or is it a lie? Ladies, oh, you cannot test a man. Wow. Ah, ladies. Okay, no, I will teach you how to. <laughs> Listen, there is a way to test. You notice I didn't say tempt. Is that true? For example, do you know parents can test their children? Oh, yes. In fact, lecturers will, when you are in school, there's something they used to give you when you were in school. It's test. Is that true? Does that mean you are not a student? No. It means we want to confirm that you have been followed. Right? Now, God here was to test Abraham. You are carried away. You are carried away. Test Abraham. And what it means is he wanted to see the validity and the authenticity, all right, the veracity of his faith. And he said to him, verse 2, take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. Now, question one, is it that God does not know that Isaac is his son? No, God knows. But in the order of the matter being discussed, Ishmael on Shammai. Okay. Amen. Thine only son, whom thou lovest, right? And go and slow time. And guess what happened? If you look at Genesis chapter 21 and verse 12, it says, And God said, Let it not be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of the bondwoman, in all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And later, when Abraham was about to take the knife to kill this Isaac, in whom his seed shall be called, the Bible says, God said, Stay your hand, don't touch or injure that child. Because I have pre prepared or provided me a ram that was caught in a thicket. Do you remember? And you know, that's a type of the redemption story. But interestingly, you are going to see here that the trial of faith is actually a biblical thing. Don't be that Christian that thinks that because I believe in God, there will be no troubles, there will be no challenges. It's not so. Jesus, is, uh, Jesus was speaking in John 16, 33. He says... As long as you are in this world, eh, you are going to have tribulation. Is that true? But be of good cheer. Because I have, I have what? I have overcome the world for you. That means tribulation is part of Christian faith. Hello? In fact, we are learning in Revelation that persecution is part of what? The ingredient. Mm -mm -mm. Are you here? Persecution is in different levels. Some are experiencing mild persecution. Some is very strong. But persecution are persecution. Are you understand? It's not here, but by that's not, I'm talking of real persecution. Sometimes deprivation of something that you own as your right. Why? Persecution. But because it is faith, you're a man of faith. You walk with God. Tribulation we call. But guess what? A gold, when it is dropped in fire, what will happen is that it will only shine brighter. Why? It is original. The trial of your faith, if it is true faith, you are only going to come out shining. Polycarp, the bishop of Smyrna, well, let me, let me leave that to Tuesday. He was about to be killed and they threatened him with fire. And then he said, you don't understand. There is one that is superior to your fire and your flames. And by the time they lit, you know, the, the, the wood with fire, and as he was burning, they wanted to tie him to the stake. He said, no. There is one whom I'm bound to that is superior to your sticks. Your sticks cannot give any security from these things. And so he said, don't bind me. So he was burned alive without being bound to anything. He had a love for Christ that was superior to the heat of the fire. That's faith. The Christians of the early church went through much persecution and many of them did not give in. They did not cave in. They did not run away. Today, average person, little challenge, we are warning God. God, last warning. Final warning. One more, God, if you try it, hey, Shabu, you are my Abba. 
and then mm -mm, listen, haba, haba, listen. It does not work like that. There are days where your faith must be tried. Guess what? God does not stop Satan from trying you. What God does is that in his wisdom, he ensures that the adversity that comes to you can never be stronger than your capacity to overcome it. That's why he says, you have to understand that no temptation has overtaken any man that he says that with the same level of temptation, there is actually strength to overcome it. Meaning, listen, you match your challenges and even surpass it. Are you here? How about why me? Ah, we should even be saying, wow, why you in the positive? Because you have a greater opportunity to glorify God by that situation than somebody that has little opportunity. Are you blessed tonight? I'm saying, what you will say, why me for and be crying? Heaven is looking at you and the angels are like, ah, why this person? Why? What I mean is, they are rejoicing that, ah, look at the person you chose. Look at the person you chose. Remember that question that was asked, what is man? That you are mindful of him. And Job is a classic example that God can go and boast about a man to Satan. Like, God was in heaven, he left the angels, he left, <laughs> bye-bye, you are too much. <laughs> he left the cherub. He left the seraph. He left the 20 and 4 elders. He left the beast. He left everybody. Michael, Gabriel. And the other ones that we don't know their names, but that you have given him. He left everybody. And then he just felt like strolling. I said, hey, Satan. Have you? Oh, he paid Job. Hold on, hold on, try. Job, on, say that. And Satan was like, hey, Baba. No be so. And that's why I'm surprised. When Christians cry, they say, I don't hear God. And Satan is hearing God. Satan that does not have a relationship with God is hearing God. He is a child of God, say so you are not hearing God. It's not that you are not hearing God, it's that you are not serious with the word of God. If you are serious with the word of God, you will hear God. Amen. Okay, they are not here. Amen. amen. If they are not here, you say amen. amen. If you are not among them, say amen. amen. Eh? Satan and God is Satan not saying, Father, it's not really clear in my spirit. Satan said, Ababa. <laughs> and they were talking. I hope it was like a conversation. Like, okay, so eh. If there was a time the sons of God gathered, Satan also came and said, Baba, you, you are saying, God, when will I enter your presence? I want to enter your presence. And Satan said, Ah, you really want to You really want to be a Are you here? Okay, story for another day. But, but hear me, this is very powerful. God is boasting about Job. But in the natural, Job's wife look at him and say, Curse God and die. What would have happened in heaven? Think about it. What would have happened in heaven? When Job just says, my darling wife, it is so true what you have said. I cause God and then I die. When Job now gets to heaven, you know, switching from earth to heaven is very fast. And you don't need transport fare. It's not a photo that will carry you there. It's not Mikra that will carry you there. It's not boat that will carry you there. As you are dying like this, you are already getting there. Meaning it's very possible that if Job died immediately, he might have met God and said, this was Are you And they say, ah, when they say, if you hear your God, you God is using you to boast, although the fire of adversity is looking hotter. That while the fire of adversity is looking hotter around your life, it may be that God is boasting about you somewhere. Don't be quick to throw in the towel. Hey, let God get the total glory. Is God helping us? Let's continue Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Are you blessed tonight? Glory to God. Let's enter our verse. So we have, we have seen verse 17. We have also seen verse 18 already. And then verse 19, of course, we have even seen it. All right, that resurrection dimension. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him, you know, in the figure. That's true. Now let's go to verse 20. Please read with me. One, two, go. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. 21. By faith, when he was dying, sorry, by faith, Jacob. Now, notice verse 20 talks about Isaac, verse 20 talks about Jacob. Is that true? Now, that means that let us call it faith, revelation, and blessing. Faith, revelation, and blessing. Because what Isaac did to Jacob and Esau was to bless them 
concerning things to come. That's revelation. That's prophetic. Is that true? Now look at verse 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. Now, so you also see here, faith worship. Is that true? Revelation and blessing. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. Jacob also blessed, you know, Joseph. Bless them. And it does not stop there. If you go to verse number 21, sorry, verse 22. Verse 21 mainly talks about faith, you know, legacy. That one generation shall praise you unto another. The same way Abraham blessed Isaac and Isaac blessed Jacob, Jacob is also blessing Joseph, you know, and the others. But something interesting happens when it comes to Joseph. Look at it. Verse 22. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Let us call verse 22 faith's futuristic preparation. Joseph saw ahead and said, you know what? What I see is that the children of Israel are going to depart. They are going to be free. And he says, when that happens, that there's something concerning my bones that you must do. Meaning that prophetically, he had sensed and picked what God was going to do. And he trusted in the God of his fathers. And then he says, you know what? On the basis of the knowledge of the God of my fathers, I'm going to take action. When I die, don't keep my bones in Egypt. Exhume it and take it away. Why? Because the land of promise is where we are going to. Even though my spirit has departed, exhume me and take me there. Don't bury me in Egypt. Wow. Somebody say, wow. wow. <laughs> Faith. Futuristic preparation. When my, when my wife and I were trusting God for the fruit of the womb, and we're doing ministry actively, doing all we can, you know, to the glory of God. One of the things we did was, we now went to buy shop. You know shop, baby shop. We even started writing the names of the baby. So all of you that came with 1,000 names, I don't know what you want to do with it. You were not there with us when we were <laughs> waiting. But when the baby came, I said, you have your own 10 names. And there's no space for you. <laughs> Are you following me now? Oh, yes. We're writing the names. And then we're prophesying. Prophesy, bought the shawl. So sometimes we're just looking for clothes in the wardrobe. You know, you just see the shawl. Hey, sometimes you hold it a racket. You quickly, you know, drop a little to shakatele my hadas. You drop it again. So thank you, Jesus. Later, after some time, even if you don't see the shawl, do you know it's in your spirit? If you are not in the house, it can go back to you. Is that true? So uh, on the time when the baby will come unexpectedly, but God planned, uh, we were not now looking for things. Why? Futuristic preparation. Somebody save it. Because I'm speaking by the anointing that somebody here you're trusting God for the fruit of the womb, you will have your baby. And nobody saying amen for anybody. Amen. Okay, everybody say amen. amen. Okay, in God's time, you will have your baby. Amen. And you will come back here to testify. Amen. So when the doctor will tell you, the average thing the doctor will tell people in Antinata, is Antinata now, that they will tell you, buy baby things at least maybe two, three months before time, if possible. Not two days to the time, because you don't know. Are you here? And do you know that preparation to can be faith? Because you know there's something inside, but the thing has not come out. You know you have it. Listen, one of the ways I know that you believe in your destiny and that you have faith is that the way you are behaving now can tell us whether you are preparing for anything or you are not preparing for anything. I hope you know there's a way young people live that you know that these ones are not ready for anything. You say, sir, I sing. I see myself singing before nations. And then we sing, I stand, I stand in of you. Say, do you know it? You say, that's all. No, I only know I know me sorry. Ah, I know me sorry. It's not enough. I stand, I stand in of you, holy God, to all praise is due. I stand in of you. Uh -huh, you are preparing for nations like that. Not I stand, I stand in all of you. Yes, y'all Oh, yes, y'all yes, y'all me. Oh God, to whom all praises do, eh, no, all praises be. Eh, eh. Where did you get that? In fact, some people don't know what that line is. Oh God, he be, oh, he be, be. No. The way we know that you are going somewhere is that you are preparing and you are behaving like somebody that is going somewhere. 
Do you know if you have an exam and your friends meet you on the road? They say, hey, Peter, Peter, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, pass. Do you know you know answer? They say, pass. Say, I have the exam to pass. I cannot pass anymore. But some of us, we behave as if we are not going anywhere. The way you are, for example, tomorrow now is work. Some people have no, they've not washed the clothes. They ah, they say, oh yeah, what? Uh, oh yeah, more like, hey, say, guys, my girl, I guess it's Hey, I don't know if that is faith preparation too, but <laughs> I don't know that one. Well, there's an understanding that sponsors that behavior. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory. All right, take a little more so that we can pray. Are you catching something? Yeah, we are making progress. Now, look at it. We have seen faith mindfulness. We have seen faith desire. We have seen faith trial. All right. We have seen faith revelation and blessing. We have seen faith legacy. All right. That's verse 21. Verse 22. We have seen faith futuristic preparation. Right. And that is verse 22. In verse 23, what you see is faith audacity. By faith, Moses. When he was born, was he three months of his parents? Because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. That faith's audacity. They knew that he was the proper child and they are not going to allow the king's verdict to traumatize them. They hid the child. And that's why you are going to notice, and this is very important, I need to say this. You know, when you read Exodus chapter 2, verse 2, that's where you see that issue, how that they kept the child. Hmm. If you allow fear this year, you will look like a crippled man on the day when you should manifest in destiny. Fear has made people, and let me even say this, you know, because there are people that follow us from other places, and I need to say this, so that when it's uploaded, they will hear. Couples have died, and wives especially have died, because the husband insisted on CS, believing that, that doing CS is a cause and that the Bible does not support cesarean session. And because of that, you know, and the person now dies because it must be natural, it must be direct. Some of them, the woman will die and the baby will die. Something that under 10 minutes. Both the baby and the mother is preserved. That's not faith. That's foolishness. That's tempting God. The doctor has checked the child. Medical science has advanced and God has allowed it to be so. And they tell you that baby, this is not right. And you know that in the moment of labor and delivery is a very strategic. It's not something you can postpone and be playing anyhow. Why don't you allow it? Say no. My God has told us. If the mother and the baby dies, that was not faith. I understand. It's possible to believe like that and it happens, but why put the woman under undue pressure at the risk of her life and that of the baby when the doctor has given you the right word and you cannot just listen? CS does not kill a woman. It doesn't. I'm not even saying that's what we did. That's not even what we did. But I just, that word just came to my spirit because somebody's going to watch this video later and, and the husband will be troubling them for not doing CS and the woman will be almost dying. So the advice now is, hey, you know, it's not the husband that's carrying the baby. When you enter labor, you'll, go to, you'll be humble. You'll be, you'll be so calm. You, that's when you will know that. Mm, amen. The Lord give you understand. So don't be like that. No, no, no. Don't be like that. You must have audacity, but the audacity must be within the confines of truth and understanding. These ones were audacious, but notice the child. It was about the child. They hid the child. Now, if the king killed them, that's still a different scenario from a woman that wants to put to bed. Do you understand? But it's very cute. I have it, I have it. You have malaria, you're not taking drugs. I have it, I have it. And three days, five days, you're already getting lean. You're almost done, I have it. Or you are, you are stooling. One day, two days, three days, four days, five days, one week. You are stooling and we're already seeing your bones. Right? Your skin, you are now almost able to pull it from, from the bone. I have faith. This cheekbone is already coming out. I have faith. Mm. Receive wisdom. 
Because if you die, your spirit will depart. If I, you may make it to heaven, but they will tell you you came to hell. I've heard about the miracles. I've heard about the signs in my day. Hey, Lord, have your way. I've heard about the miracles. I've heard about the miracles. I've heard about the signs in my day. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Moses parted the Red Sea. Elijah called down fire. Jesus opened blind eyes. Yeshua, your people, we got. Hallelujah. No well, I'll go to studio this year. I'm going to sing that song. All right, let's make progress now. When you look at verse 24, when verse 24 is that true? By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He still calls it faith. It means there is what we call faith refuser. For example, I can say, Lambano by faith. Oh, I receive my blessing. I receive and thank God for that. But sometimes you can also refuse my faith and say, I reject this thing. It looks alluring, but no. It's still faith. Do you know what that means? Faith has sanctification in it. Exactly. Faith has consecration in it. Faith separates itself from anything that is not the will of God. Say with me, by faith, I separate myself from anything. From everything that is not the will of God. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Now let's make progress. Look at this, verse 25. Choosing rather, choosing rather, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the players of Egypt. Do you see that? To enjoy the players of sin. For a season. You know what that means? Let's be very sincere. Faith also chooses to suffer. Mm. It's the choice of faith. To what, sir? Suffer. Mm. It's possible. But notice, it was not suffering because he was disobedient to God. Is that true? He was suffering because he was trusting God. And he's not going to enjoy the pleasures of sin. Let me ask you, brothers and sisters. Hope is not that your own faith enjoys the pleasures of sin for a season and chooses to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Hope your faith is not on TikTok exposing private parts in the name of followers. Hope your faith is not compromising at work, changing figures, changing time, lying because of what you want to accomplish. No. Is your faith turning away from sin, exalting righteousness and overcoming the world? These things are very important. And the Bible says, by faith. What did he do in verse 26? He, ex he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Let me tell you. Very honestly, if you study archaeology, ancient history and archaeology, you are going to realize that Egypt is one of those places that is a historic city in the old world. When you study the seven wonders of the ancient world, you are going to find Egypt at a ranking position. Have you heard of the pyramids of Egypt? I hope you know that there are, there are, there are certain treasures that you can only find in Egypt on earth. I don't know if they will soon find one. Amen? <laughs> but I'm saying in Egypt. That tells you that the gold of Egypt in the days of Moses must be something like the greatest treasure. Yet, the Bible says, Moses prefers to choose to be suffering affliction with the people of God than to be enjoying those things. Why? Because Moses knew something. That faith in God is a priceless possession. It will deliver to you not just what earth can offer, but what heaven can give. There are things earth can offer. But there are things only heaven can give. There are things man can give you. But there are things only God can give. Faith will give you what God can give and also supply what man can give when necessary. Hey, should I say that again, my brother? Faith will give what God can give and what man can supply when necessary. What does that tell you? 
if we focus on God, those that know you, we trust in you, not in noises and chariots. Meaning that if we trust God and we rely on Him, we will not only get what only God can give, we will also get what men can give. Because the things that the Gentiles seek are also our own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Faith can forsake certain things. Forsake sin. Forsake lie. Forsake, forsake wickedness. Forsake carnality. Forsake secret compromise. For, forsake open shamelessness. You know there are people that are doing secret compromise. And there are some that are doing open shamelessness. Two of them, they are not in faith. Amen. Through faith, he kept the Passover. The sprinkling of blood. All right, lest it be destroyed. All those things are the operations of faith. You see faith perseverance. You see faith worship. You see faith devotion. And then the Bible says in verse 29, verse 28, right? Lest that the destroyer, all right, of the firstborn should touch them. Or he that destroyed the firstborn. And we know that that Passover was a type of Christ that was to come. For when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the next thing you will see here. Is that the Bible says in verse 29, verse 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do so drowned. What does that tell you? Faith has miraculous dimension. The Red Sea is not the one in your backyard. Red Sea was a massive, in fact, by the time the Red Sea would pass, researchers and historians had as it that they told us that. It, the walls of the sea actually stood like walls of a building, like high fences. And the children of Israel passed the middle. Do you know what it means to be seeing water like aquarium? And you are in the middle passing. <laughs> Me, I will not walk, I will run. <laughs> Some of you will be cut. I will not, I will run. I won't even touch it. I will just run first. Then we'll talk about it later. Oh, yes. But you see that faith can turn Red Sea to dry land. And guess what? Faith here did not remove the red. You know, faith can move mountains. Is that true? But you see, red sea. Uh, faith may not remove red sea. Faith can part it. You know what that means? If it can part red sea, it can part mountains. Some mountains will have to be removed. Some mountains will have to be leveled. Some mountains will have to be split. Are you here? Or you fly over the mountain, but we all bridge through inside. The mountain must have give you space to pass. One matters is you pass. It doesn't really matter what happens to the mountain. God, uh, roll it. Okay. Have you passed? <laughs> mm. May God show up for you. In the name of Jesus. We're almost through. Now from verse, from verse 30. From verse 30 to 40. All right? Is what we call the exploit of faith. So you can call it faith, triumph, and turbulence. All right? And I'll summarize that. You can do your readings alone when you get home. Are you blessed already? Faith, triumph, and turbulence. And you are going to see many things. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. Hey, Harlot did not perish with them because she received the spies in peace. He now says in verse 32, what more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. Do you remember Gideon in Judges chapter 6? The miraculous victory that God gave them. Or he talks about Barak. Judges chapter 4 to 5. How many of you remember the story of Deborah? All right, do you remember? Yes. And then he now says, okay, it's not just, it's not just Gideon, it's not just Barak, even Samson. Judges chapter 13 to chapter 16. Look at the exploit that Samson did. Moving the gate, carrying the gate to, <laughs> to the mountain. Is there we grow and then we do supernatural things, Samson. But it does not stop there. It, it speaks about Jephthah. All right, and that you, you're going to see boldness. All right, Judges chapter 11. And then you hear about David, and that's his reliance on God that allowed for the manifestation of the miraculous. First Samuel chapter 17, from verse 32 to 51. 
And then you are going to hear of Samuel, the prophet of God. For Samuel chapter 3 verse 18. Chapter 7 verse 1 to 17. Samuel. And then he says that there are also many other prophets. Do you know what that means? Your name too is there. Because in the New Testament, the life of faith does not stop. It continues. It did not end with Malachi. It did not end with Acts. It continues with you and me. That means I am numbered among the company of those. Do you know my son? To be called your own. To be numbered among the righteous. To be called your own gives me joy. Can we sing it together? To be called your own. To be numbered among the righteous. To be called your own gives me joy. To be called your own. To be called your own. To be numbered among the righteous. To be called your own gives me joy. One more time, everybody. To be called your own. Called your own. Eh. To be numbered among the righteous. To be called your own gives me joy. Hey, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. And do you know that? All of them, there is Bible verse for all of them. Subdued kingdoms, Joshua chapter 12, Second Samuel chapter 8, subdued kingdoms. You remember that the walls of Jericho fell on the account of the faith of the children of God. All right, those things are exploits of faith. What did they do again? They wrought righteousness. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. They wrought righteousness. Remember that Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. How about promises? He says they through faith. Obtain promises. Numbers 14, 30. Obtain promises. Tell yourself, I obtained the promises of God. Through faith. He said they stopped the mouth of lions. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel was thrown into the lions. There is no fairy tale. It's real. And he prayed. And the Bible said God stayed the mouth of the lions. so that they did not hurt him. Maybe some of you went next to visit us. Trust that um, um, the mouth of the German shepherd dogs will be stayed. <laughs> Start with German shepherd before lion. Anyway, don't tempt God. You better ask. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm saying that there are certain situations that when you are thrown there, not of your own accord, your faith will produce. Listen, faith, listen, yeast does not produce until it has entered over. Is that true? Your faith does not produce until it has entered adversity. Adversity is the arena where faith thrives. Faith likes and hey, Faith knows that hey, if you can only allow me to enter this place, then you will see the fourth man show up for you. Faith, by faith, they quench the violence of fire. Daniel chapter 3. He and his friends were thrown into the fire. And the Bible says, later you will find out that Nebuchadnezzar learned theology. He said, I see a fourth man in the fire. And who is that fourth man? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. By faith, they escaped swords. First Samuel 17. Exodus 18 verse 4. They were made strong. I declare you are made strong. Hebrews 11, 11, Romans 4, 19. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Made strong, made strong, made strong. Say with me, I am made strong. I am made strong. Remember, Sarah was made strong to conceive. Can I pray for you? You are made strong to conceive and to birth the will of God for you this year. No matter what is happening and it's looking as if it will not work, it will work. God will come through for you in supernatural ways. If you believe it, shout the loudest, Amen. By faith, works valiant in flight. 1 Samuel 14, 13 to 14. For example, you study about the mighty men of David. The Bible says, Adino the Azonite. Eliazar, the son of Dodo. This man, was, men were so strong that they held the spear and they caught men and the spear clean to their hand. So that when they were tired, people needed to help them remove them. It was, it was the supernatural power of God. Listen, when the power of God comes upon your life and faith becomes active, what you are going to notice is that things that did not respond to you before will begin to respond. Why? In the realm of faith, everything is possible. In the realm of faith, anything is possible. What God cannot do has not been created and will never be created. And because I'm a child of God and I sit together with him in heavenly places, he says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto him. And guess what? He gave us the privilege to share in that authority that at the name of Jesus, 
Every knee will bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things underneath the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can I declare that situations in your life, they bow this is Yeshua. You can stand now. We are praying. When we call you, you will answer. Yeshua, yeah. Give me volume two. He pali bahaya. When we call you, you deliver. There's no name, no name greater than yours. Baka seke tali baraka haya. There's no name. Name above a name, oh, oh, greater than yours. There's no name. Who live I and no man here, greater than yours. There's no name. Who live I and no man here, greater than yours. Listen, by faith, bring it down a little. Look at this as you are standing. Oh, we are praying now. By faith, they put armies to flight. Women had children that were dead, resurrected. For Samuel, you know, first Kings 17, 17 to 24. The child died, the prophet came and raised him back. Listen, it may not be a child that has died for you, it may be a part of your body that is not responding. Listen, your immune system may not be strong enough to counter you know the things that are trying to challenge it, but you can lay your hands on yourself by faith and say they lay hands on the sick and they recover. The Bible did not say they lay hands on others, it said the sick. Meaning, if they are the sick and they lay hands, are you here? Say with me, I lay hands on the sick and they recover. If you have a challenge in your body, say with me, I lay hands and I recover. Prophesy one moment and say, I lay hands and I recover. I experience the healing power of God tonight. Can you lay hands on issues by faith? Situations that will not bow. Bokatelias. In the name of Jesus Christ, the word of God is the most sure word of prophecy. He says, You will declare a thing and it shall be established, and the light of God shall shine upon my path. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall I condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their reward is with me, saith the Lord. For I have not seen or ears heard, neither has he entered into the figment of the imaginations of any man what God has in store for them that love him. Declare in the name of Jesus, Matabashai, Rebo Shekete, Ezeberinas, every form of infertility, demonic growth in your body, Shelia Sarianda. In the name of Jesus, we take authority to now and we rebuke the spirit of infirmity and we declare that sickness takes out of your body. In the name of Jesus, for where the word of the king is, there is power. He sent his word, the word healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Nepo Sika Bahaya, Man Nebar Washa Bahai. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take authority over sickness and infirmities. Trample on the enemy, glory be to God. What man in miracles say? Itaba lekerao, shebianda bahai, mataba. Can you declare life over situations in your life and family? Life, life. Oh me, oh me. When you are there, 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 you are here, you are steer your faith now, steer your faith now. Believe God for possibilities. Adadu ni di kubasai. Maybe leko shika barandeske. You are here, you are here, oh, you are here, you are here, you are here, oh, you are here, you are here, you are here. Lift your hands toward heaven and pray now. Lift your hands toward heaven as a sign of surrender, trusting God for the supernatural. You are here, hey, you are here, you are here, you are here, you are here, you are here. You are here, you are here, you are here, you are here, ah, you are here. He says, look and leave. So also as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, and the children of Israel looked and they lived. 
we also look to Jesus. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. Any situation can respond. The word of God is multifaceted in his operations. So shall my word go for and not return void until it has accomplished that which it was sent to do. Send the word to now. Send the word to now. The children of Israel were languishing under the Egyptian captivity. And he said he sent his word. The word healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Send the word of God tonight. Send the word of God tonight. Shut up. Rete Retebo Sabia. Mana and Takamata. Isamalaba di Kabias. Adabragadesh. Adbaralarupa. Adbaralarupa. Ola no soriu. Holy Jericho, Adabalai, Shepete de Rossi, Adbaralarupa. Adbaralarupa. Ola no soriu. Holy Jericho. Uh-huh. Pray, pray. Yes. Yes. Iwaloye o Release your faith to now. There is power. Where there is faith, there is power. The power of God released in the direction of your desires. Olua, Olua, etobi lava o. Ede meleke diga baya sa katalaman. Retele bedi asabe la via da valo. E prediato uishi mo pa mo love the truth of your word. Like never before revealed, we see more power, more love, the truth of your way. Like never before revealed, power in abundance, miracle in abundance, wisdom in abundance, favor in abundance. Matalabos yananana, ebregede, asabalagada vina vina mara teleperia. Rabba baba baya na sabaye yeli ba asha na mali edeberi adabu. If you are trusting God for a miracle in your body, you are trusting God for a miracle in your body. I want to minister healing now. You are trusting God for a miracle in your body. I want you to come out here. I want to lay hands on you tonight. Are you trusting the Lord for a miracle in your body? Listen. Are you trusting the Lord tonight for a miracle in your body? I want to lay hands tonight. I promise during the week. That I was going to pray for as many who are trusting God for healing, total permanent healing. I wanted to come forward now and I'll lay hands on you. If you trust God for healing in any part of your body, just come forward here. Yes, come forward. Can we pray? Can we pray? 
Shete ya bota balatai. Shabran de kete. Stay, stay, stay on the straight line, please. On the straight line, on the straight line. Shabada badai. Mete, come, come closer to the front. Shift, shift forward. Shift forward. Shift forward. Come closer to the front. Yes, yes. Ita ba 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 ba. Iwa tope wala o masititi. Olu a olu wa. Iwa tope wa ni ni kwaju a ye. Ida logo la re o. The waters are being steered. The waters, the waters are being steered. Emi te bi paleri a yoni no. Agbara o la re toga. I want to see what you have for me. Just be on your knees, share it. I want to move a lot in my shoes. Hey, Wale Shabia, let him be his sapara, mata parate, mata kateke dej, mata bara olorude, be a job and be costly. Let's declare in the name of Jesus. We see the release of the power of God in your bodies. We see the release. Lift your two hands. Those of you in front, lift your two hands now. Lift your two hands. Pray now and say, Father, I want to receive healing. A healing touch from you. Sabatoba, Beli Kapo, Predeketeketea, Sabra Batai. Stay with me. Kapron de Lema, Matabata, Mete Beletosa, Olua, Olua, Etobi Loba. We take authority. Over you, spirit of infirmity, I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. I command you to lose your grip over this body. I declare right now, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, experience the healing power of God. One, Shaka Pentes, Perinas, 